Welcome, welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Paula, thanks for joining today. Next Sunday is Pentecost. We are going to meet outside at Peace Park. So if you're able to join us, come over to Peace Park at 930. If you wanna join us online, there will be a video. We'll, we'll take a recording of everything. Um, it, Pentecost, as you may recall, the festive color is red. So if you have some red about, please wear it or bring it. And um, we're having baptisms and confirmation next Sunday. It's gonna be a wonderful day. And after worship, we will have a picnic to celebrate. If you happen to be one of the faith singers, come at nine o'clock and 9.30 and we'll be singing together for the service. We, that'll give us a minute to practice. Secondly, Face Little Friends um, I'm, has a challenge uh, financially, and this is true with all daycares across the state, maybe in some other places as well. We have a challenge financially, and we've been getting some grants. So we are asking if you are willing to find in your email the QR code if you don't. Well, you're here today. You know about the internet. <laughs> Find the QR code, reach out to your legislature because I'm here to tell you we could not make payroll without the grants right now. And thankfully, the whole legislature, both the Democrats and the Republicans, agreed that child care grants are important in the last round of funding and that conversation is happening again so we would like you to reach out to your legislature to tell them we have a daycare we're keeping it going we didn't close over the pandemic and the grants are one of the major ways that we managed to keep the keep the daycare open so Thank you. If you can't do the email um, mode through the QR code, then you can, I'm sure you know how to look up the phone number of your legislature and reach out and just call them. Tell them we need those child care grants. Thank you. Let's have church. I forgot the last announcement. Speaking of the daycare, we have a new director. She's starting Monday. So watch for more information. We won't, um, we won't have her come to church next week because we don't wanna upstage the children. But I'm very excited that the committee has appointed a new director and she's accepted and starts on Monday. The Spirit of 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the Spirit in the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let's pray together. O oh God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy 
that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is from the 68th Psalm. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy holy habitation, O God, you are father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Speak to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice, Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter, the uh, sections from the fourth chapter in the fifth chapter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, be, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the glor Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. 
And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. <clears throat> I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Glory to you, O Lord. I once saw a movie where a dying man left a video letter to his friends, and the whole movie was kind of an adventure story about what had happened to him and why he made his choices and what they would do with their loss of saying goodbye to him. So today's reader, reading is not that. <laughs> But the placement is interesting. We know Jesus was praying, and he says to God, I finished what you sent me to do. I finished the work. Glorify me. Bring me back to heaven. Now, it might occur to us that the thing Jesus came to do, the work he came to do, is to die on the cross and save us. However, he says, I finished the work, and right after the prayer, immediately after today's reading, Jesus heads toward the Passion. He crossed the Kidron Valley, he went into the garden and met Judas with the, this is the one who betrayed him, with the Roman guard and the temple priest. So Jesus finished the work God gave him to do before any of that happened, before the betrayal before the trial, before the crucifixion, and definitely before the resurrection. I finished the work you gave me to do. Now, we don't have a Bible study about the weekly readings, but if we did, and if one of the Bible study members were standing here, they might ask that question. What on earth was the work Jesus, God gave Jesus? If we know it wasn't the crucifixion, because that came later. They, the people in the Bible study would look at the reading that came right before this to find out. <laughs> so what we know Jesus had done at that point before the Passion was to make God's name known. Jesus had shared a vision of God by sharing himself with his students and followers. And hasn't Jesus done that for us too? We know God's name. We know Christ. So the work that Jesus came to do not only for, was for those guys back then, but it's for us today, and so is the prayer. So the prayer that we just heard is kind of like that video being watched after a loved one's death, and here we are, all of us, on the other end of Christ's death and resurrection, reading it afterwards, puzzling it out, if you will. What did he want for us? Not only did, what did he want us to do, but what did Jesus want God to do for us? What did he ask for? And he did ask for protection, and we, we certainly need that. But somehow, because that's my point about the timing, this prayer comes before the Passion. Jesus was not praying for protection against suffering. He prayed this prayer, and then he immediately went on to suffer in the Passion. So everything that human beings suffer now, that wasn't in this prayer. When Jesus prayed, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so they may be one as we are one. Church, the prayer Jesus prayed for us, his last prayer, was for protection from divisions. It is a prayer for unity. And oh my goodness, we need that, right? 
We like different types of music and different preaching. And we, we Christians, we actually like different denominations. Uh, well, how many tr- Christians are there in Janesville? How many different types of Christian? I guess somebody will tell me. And we all disagree over who can be a pastor. So we know we even disagree over who can decide which pastor is where because our Catholic friends have one process and our Lutheran friends have one process. And <laughs> then sometimes we get caught up on the words. What does call mean? <laughs> who gives it? Well, God, obviously. And even how do you pray? Do we disagree? Do you pray with your hands closed or you do you pray with your eyes closed or open? Or do you pray with your heart, making things up as you go along and you feel yourself moved by your connection with God? Or do you pray by reading something that other Christians have written and thousands and thousands of other Christians have prayed before you and you feel yourself held by the tradition and held by the community? We have a lot of differences in the church. And that's not even to touch on things like differences in our gifts or differences in our experiences or our perspective on things. So Jesus prayed that we would be one, that we would have unity. And he did not mean one person would tell us all what it was. (laughs) He prayed for us to be unified with with each other as Christ is with God. And a little bit later in John 17, he prayed that they, that's us, may be one as we are one, that's I, that's Jesus, in them, you, that's God. We're overhearing Jesus' prayer, you in me, that they may be perfect in unity. And if that happens, Jesus said, then the whole world will know that you, God, sent me, Jesus, and that you loved them, the whole world, as you loved me. And we can certainly grow in our unity with God. I mean, I suspect we all know how to do that. (laughs) When are we close with God? (laughs) Well, maybe worship, prayer, praise, gratitude, spiritual practices. I know you all know how to take those deep breaths. (sighs) Meditation is the next step, calms you way down. You can pay attention to God again. Serving others for the love of God. We know how to grow in our unity with God. Well, but what about one another? Is there any evidence that Christ's last prayer for us is being answered? Hmm. Any evidence? Hmm. Back then, we know what happened during Holy Week. They scattered. <laughs> We know they did get together and pray afterwards, 120 in the upper room. We'll hear the the story next week. And then immediately, everybody started to speak in other languages, and there was total chaos. And in the early church, thousands were converted, and they started to argue. (laughs) In the early church, after thousands were converted, they started to argue. Who should have what job descriptions when they're church leaders? And what do the new members need to do to be really included? And what about adult faith formation? Do you have to learn this and this and this and that and the other? And in different towns, they had different practices. (laughs) Let's listen in to Jesus's prayer again. I pray, he said, that they may be one as we are one, I and them and you, you and me, that they may be perfect in unity. Then the whole world will know that you sent me and that you loved them as you loved me. The stakes are pretty high. Whether the world can even know God or not. But you know, in my question about evidence, whether there was unity or not, I do remember a few times in Acts. So the church, the early church had a meal program and so many people were coming to eat that it was overwhelming the pastors, they had more than one, and the Greek widows were not getting enough and the Jewish widows had plenty. Widows back then were very poor and uh, many are now. And But widows back then couldn't work and uh, they didn't have social security or Medicaid. So if they didn't have a son, they were very, vulnerable. And so folks were arguing in the church because it was an unfair distribution, and the ten 
were Greek men. I, I know from their names they were Greek, and they became the first deacons. And so it's not that everybody magically agreed and had one perspective. They really differed in their experience, their cultures, their language, their perspective, even their roles. But the church leaders, which is like the council and the pastors, they could not find, um, they, they did find some ideas and some solutions after they discussed some options. And the whole congregation listened and recognized wisdom when they heard it. And then there was another time the early church was arguing, what do you have to do to be a real member? <laughs> and uh, in one town, they said, you have to do everything in the Hebrew Bible, which is the Old Testament, which is rather a lot. There was a fellow who wrote a book um, recently, a few years ago, called the, the Year of Living Biblically. And basically, he tried to do everything in the Hebrew Bible. And in another town, they said, no, you don't have to do all that. You just have to believe in Jesus and remember the poor and to learn to pray. Oh, we do all that now. Um, and they had so many arguments over membership criteria in the early church that finally everybody said, well, let's get our leaders involved. My goodness. And they sent people from each faction in each town to a, a kind of conference called a council in the early church to the central church and the elders who were the pastors gathered together to hear everyone out. And in the speeches that they made, this is Acts 17, if you want to look it up, Peter said, oh my goodness, we can't even do everything Moses taught. Why are we making them do it? <laughs> so it did get a little practical too. And then the leaders decided together on four criteria. And these days we'd keep three of them. Um, but the other one was cultural. And the elders and the apostles who met together and found agreement then wrote it down. And they sent a letter which said something quite remarkable. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and ours as well. Can you imagine? Can you imagine our council having a disagreement like that or our congregation or our one of our boards or committees working on something and finding a solution and then writing their the solution their decision was so prayerful that one of our groups our call committee whoever it is could write it is the decision of the holy spirit and we agree <laughs> Oh my goodness. But that's what they wrote. And they sent a few leaders to carry that letter they wrote to various churches. And they read it aloud during the service. And the whole church in that way, the whole church in the whole region, heard the decision and they celebrated. All sides celebrated. And they shared God's peace together. So actually, I think the prayer was answered. And actually, I think... Whenever our council takes on a tricky question, and whenever our council listens to differences and prays for wisdom and makes a decision with the help of God, and whenever our congregation says yes, then God is still answering Jesus' prayer that we all may be one. Amen.
Let's proclaim our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and with one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation's leaders as they seek your will. We pray for our staff and council. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and our praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and who and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, who, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the risen one, alleluia.